यपति तपनो वातिवातसमिंदे वह निर्धते धरणिदे लंगते नैवेला सोय श्रीमाखिल जगता अंतरात्मतीर्ण धर्म रक्षा दिशत कुशला स्वामी नारायण गुणातीतोक्षर ब्रह्म भगवान्षोत्तम जनो जानन्द सत्यम मुचते भवबंधना श्री स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय अक्षर पुरुषोत्तम महाराज नी जय राधा कृष्ण देव नी जय सियावर रामचंद्र भगवान नी जय गुरु हरि प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज नी जय in the divine presence of bhagwan swami narayan and the equally divine presence of my guru hari pramukh swami maharaj in the presence of revered saints the dignitaries who are on dais and who were on dais shri ram murti sahib ravi chandran sahib and all the people who have gone out to arrange this program first i would like to thank from my heart sri suresh bhai rindani the only reason i am here today is because of a warmth that he showed 22 years ago when i was a very small sadhu i became a sadhu around 28 years back and when i didn't even know philosophy when i was totally new in the spiritual world which i am even now but the first and the only bank i have ever been to not to open an account <laughs> but the only bank i have been to was the state bank of india and those memories came back when he phoned me I've come to tell you that relations and love and warmth are never lost. Even if a person that you know and you love and you just meet once and you don't meet him ever again in your life, remember they are never lost. And that's something which is we overlook. When you have friends and as i begin tonight's topic is an old ancient story a spiritual story in the indian tradition of 10 alwars there were 10 alwars who are very close friends and they decided to go on a pilgrimage together spiritual people going from one tirth to another tirth another tirth another tirth they were happy together but when some challenge or when the balance is disturbed when something happens that we don't want relations fragment so as they were moving from one place to another one night they stayed in a hut and to their shock and horror there was a huge storm and that storm gathered and there was lightning everywhere and the lightning kept coming close to the hut they were living in for one hour two hours the lightning kept striking nearby it won't strike the hut so they were open hearted people they had an open discussion just as you officers would have if something goes into the bank 
So they said, look, why do you think this lightning keeps striking near the hut? Maybe the end of one person is near. And because of that one person, it is not correct that the nine others should suffer. I hope you understand. That's our question usually. That's why fights occur. You go home and something's happened at home and you said, why should I suffer because of you? Why should you suffer because of somebody you know? So they decided that obviously if somebody's time has come and he's about to die, the lightning is about to strike him, let's do one thing. That there was a tree about 100 yards away from the hut. They said in this storm, while the lightning is there, let's make sure that one by one, each of us should go and touch that tree and come back. Whoever's turn is there would be killed, the nine would survive. Fair? So they pushed, nobody was ready. He said, in case I go and I get struck, I'm dead. So they forced the first guy, he went scared and he came back happy. Because nothing happened. Then the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. When the eighth, the eighth didn't want to go, they dragged him out. When he came and he went back, then there was just two left. The ninth guy, he said his prayers and he went and he came back. Now there was only one guy left. He said, for God's sake, you know, don't do this. I'm alone, I'm lonely, I have a family to keep. He said, no, 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 deal is a deal, you have to go. When that last guy, the tenth guy, he reached the tree, the lightning fell on the hut. It was because of one guy that the nine were surviving, not because of the one guy that the nine were about to be threatened. I want to tell you today that sometimes groups are sustained by a single individual because of his integrity, his commitment and sincerity. And institutions are run because of individuals. The select few individuals who go beyond their capacity, whose integrity is unquestioned, whose sincerity is, you know, exemplified, those are the people who run the institution. I ask you, what is a bank? What is State Bank of India? Is it a building? Is it a branch? Is it a circle? Is it an office? State Bank of India is the trust that it inspires because of integrity-oriented individuals. And if anybody is responsible for the success and the trust, it's you. I can't be just kind and wishy-washy and tell you that, no, 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 you're all okay, you can do this. It's, who is the management? <laughs> Everybody complains about the management. Who is the management? Not the four people. Everybody in it together. So tonight, as we talk about, it brings me, it brings me to the topic that we are dealing with, that individuals make up the institutions. And individuals like you, are the pillars of an institution. So remember, I know you are burdened. Pillars are. I know that you do more than the responsibility that you are given. Pillars do. You sometimes feel stressed. Of course, pillars are. You sometimes feel that other people get more credit. Pillars are not pretty. They are there for strength. Yes, but the most important things that the pillars have to do is to keep balance. If you lose your balance, then the institution will begin to teeter and totter. So balance is a very important thing that we must realize and we must try and imbibe in our lives. But you will ask me one question, hey, Swamiji, but why are you teaching us something that we already know? We are successful officers. Some have retired. <laughs> He said, why are you telling us something that we don't need to know? Well, the secret is very clear. It's out in the open, into the public. That because you are successful, you need to be reminded again and again. If you are walking on the road and you drop, you won't even raise a dust. But if you are walking the tightrope and if you fall, you fall to your grave. The higher you are, 
the greater the risk. The bigger you are, the more balanced and more equilibrium that you need to sustain. The guys on the road, suppose, you know, in the rickshaw, just today we were discussing that the first lesson of unity that the children learn are in the vans that pick them up. <laughs> because there are more than enough people in the van. They have to live and adjust to each other until the school comes. School ma sikhwade ke nahi, to bhagwan jane. But the vans do teach. Okay? So I'm just trying to tell you, the higher you are, the more important you are, the more the necessity of keeping equilibrium and balance. And if we don't realize that, you know, then you are not going to contribute to your life and to the institution that you represent. It's very important. In any given body, there are four types of people. You take the human body, you take the body of SBI or the officers, you know, group or the system that you have created. In any given body, there are four types of bones, meaning four types of officers. One is the jaw bones. People who just talk and talk and do nothing. You know, wait for me. There are, there are people who are the jaw bones who keep talking and talking and talking and do nothing. The second types of bones are the knuckle bones. Those who always get into the way. If you decide, okay, let's have a program and if this is a date, he'll always say, why that date? Once you are out on a travel and you have done a bus for everybody's happiness, he's the guy who says, why this early? <laughs> so there are the knuckle bones who will always throw in a spanner in anything you do. Everybody has that. But there are the wish bones that they would constantly wish that others would do the work, <laughs> even their work. <laughs> I know the greater the laugh, the more identification. <laughs> because we always wish that some fine guy would come over and finish our work and we'll have to less to do. So there are the wish bones. But fortunately, there are also the backbones. And I believe that tonight, the people who have come here are the backbones which represent the State Bank of India. And as the backbones of the institution that you represent, you have to stand erect. And the job of the backbone was to keep the body in balance. <laughs> so if you have a bent backbone, it does more damage than good. So ultimately, we must understand that we must find a way of keeping balance, as the person who introduced said, between your family and your friends, you need to strike a balance. Between your work and your home, you need to find a balance. Between your bank account and your expenditures, you need to strike a balance. Even at home, if you have three children or two children, you need to find a balance. You can't avoid it. Even if you're going on a holiday or the stress and health, you need to strike a balance. If you can't find balance, then you will struggle and you will spoil whatever that you have gained. So balance is a very tricky thing. It's so easy if I give you 10 stones and you said you put them in a balance, so easy taking a scale and put the stone and then find a balance, that's damn easy. But finding a balance between emotions, relations, commitments and truth and lie, you know, it's a constant thing. It's not something that you learn from the books, it's out of the books. I know of an old story, a Chinese story, when a Chinese emperor, he calls his minister. And he said, look, I have a kingdom, I have subjects to rule, how should we rule the people? The minister told him that, sir, because you are at that place, I want to share this story. The minister said, there are two supreme laws that govern everything. The law of reward and the law of punishment. You might have it differently because the bosses, if you do something good, they give you increment, they give you promotion, you know, they give you credit. That is the law of reward. And if you do something wrong, they give you demotion. Then you get a memo. Then you get public humiliation. That is punishment. Majority of people, you know, they work hard because of the fear of <laughs> punishment rather than the pull of reward. But this is a system that goes on. It's simple, common everywhere. So the minister tells the emperor that there are two basic laws of reward and punishment. 
Then the emperor is wise. He said, okay, let's share the department. You keep the law of punishment and I'll keep the portfolio of reward. So the emperor for the whole year, he started giving land and money and gifts, promotions and becoming so happy and kind to all his subjects. Everybody praised him. What a wonderful emperor we have. And the minister, he had to punish, he had to hang, he had to throw people into jail, he had to whip, he had to cane. And everybody was fearful and said, what a bad minister we have. But after a year, when the emperor called the entire subjects for a meeting, nobody turned up. Why? Because he was just too good. <laughs> he said, the emperor is too kind, he won't mind. Samjhi kya? Sahib bau saraj. The problems. <laughs> okay, the emperor is too kind. He's always nice. And uh, so nobody turned up. Nobody listened to him. But when the minister just whispered that tomorrow at 9, the whole crowd turned up. So the emperor started wondering and said, My God, people praise me, but they don't listen to me. And people hate him, but they listen to every word that he says. So the emperor said, hey, wait a minute, come here minister, let's exchange the portfolios. <laughs> I'll do the punishment and you do the reward. You know what happened? When next day the minister started becoming kind and giving reward, and the next day the emperor started in punishing and becoming harsh, the public started saying, ah, oh, emperor ne khasi gila gash. Ane pelo dayo thi gash. So they got rid of the emperor and made the minister into the emperor. <laughs> Emotions are so tricky to strike a balance. It's not that easy. It's not mathematical. Churchill often used to say the laws of the heart are different. In a mathematics class, 2 plus 2 is 4. But in an emotional class, 2 plus 2 may not equal 4, they may equal 8, they may equal minus 1, they may equal 10, they may equal 15, and sometimes the blackboard falls on the teacher's head. <laughs> this is the mathematics of emotions you will never know. So that's why we need to know the secrets of striking a balance even at your home, even at your work, even with your subordinates and even with your bosses. So it's such a thin thing that sometimes, you know, we live in such a sensitive world that little things, I'm giving two extreme examples. Everything may be happy, you are fine and you are so successful, but some things trigger off in your heart and you lose control and course and everything. I remember when I was living in Leicester in England, when I was a young boy and we were studying, the mayor of Leicester, she was a lady. Very popular. She was a presenter on television. Very successful. And everybody came down to listen to her and obeyed her. But once she was caught in a departmental store stealing a pair of socks. You understand? She had a disease known as kleptomania. Kleptomania means, Come <laughs> You know, it was like a simple tissue box, he would take it. This urge to take away things without paying money and without the knowledge of the owner. You know, anywhere. Even if it's a small, you know, bottle or a cork, he would take. She was psychologically suffering from kleptomania, so she could not resist going in into this departmental store and just taking a pair of socks. Just one, it was not a huge... And when she was photographed, those photographs, everything was released on television. She committed suicide because of the public humiliation she got. She was successful, but little things may make you lose your balance. But tuj barabar hoi. Pa gharma tamaro dikro khali tamene kidu hoi ke beta tu sawaret das vage avi jaja na when you lose balance. Simple things. Fights are not big things. They become big. They are small, simple things. Nani nani vache. But they become big and they acquire huge proportions if you don't control and put them into balance. I'm giving you the exact opposite example. Many of you might have heard in 1998, it is about a bank. 
I think you are tired of hearing things about banks in this last year. So I don't want to talk about the last year tragedy. Okay, whole huge banks going down and credit banks and this, this, this. So let's not talk about pessimism. Okay, but it's about a bank which I need to really put down to you because you are officers of great integrity. The bank of Japan, you might have heard. It is known as the bank of banks. The most credible bank in the whole of Japan and an international community. In its entire history, there has not been a single criminal case against the bank or against any of its officers. That's huge credibility. In 1998, a huge financial disorder surfaced in Japan. Tentacles reached right up to the finance ministry and everywhere. The director of the Bank of Japan is named Takayuki Kama Shido, 58 years old. He was in charge of the investigations in finding the corruption. He was never corrupt. He was never under investigation. He was beyond doubt and definitely he had that great integrity and sincerity. So he was given the charge of finding the people, you know, who were responsible for this corruption. He published the names of 98 people. 98 people. Still listen. And while he was performing the investigation, one fine morning, they found him hanging by a nylon rope, committed suicide, and he, read, he had written a note. You know what he wrote? The scandal is so huge. The scandal is so huge. I am exhausted. And I have reached my limits. So I am taking my life. It is a culture which takes responsibility. Here you have a lady who was guilty and committed suicide. Here is a guy who was not guilty and he took responsibility and committed suicide on moral grounds. Change. Those 98 people were happy and eating and wild. The guys who committed the crime. The guy who became so overwhelmed by the sheer corruption, he committed suicide. There is a level of morality and commitment. I'm not asking that all of you should go to that path. But I'm saying that if we are committed individuals, we need to find a balance of how we react and how we find. So the most important thing is first, we must understand that balance is important in your life. If you look at life as we see it, first look at the cosmos. What wonderful balance that God has created. You never went and created it. Huh? We all know that the earth orbits on its own axis, spins on its own axis at 1000 miles per hour. That's why we get a 24 hour day and, 20, and you know, smaller uh, day and night. If they say that the speed of the earth was just 100 miles less, we would have had a day that is 10 days long. And we would have had a night that is 10 nights long. You know what would have happened? Nothing would grow and at night everything would freeze. What a balance even of the spin. What a balance. The sun is 93 million miles away from the earth. Even if it is even a fraction of that closer, we would be singed. There would be no life possible. Forget about the sun, the moon is more than 350 kilometers away. If the moon was a fraction closer to the sun, earth, the tides that we have would be so huge that not a single landmass on this earth would be bereft of water. You know, suddenly if you feel, let's call the moon closer, it's easier that you go closer to the moon. <laughs> Don't call it closer. The balance that we see in the cosmos you know, God has created a balance and He's teaching us that we need to find a balance in our life. The famous scientist Isaac Newton, you know, he had created a wonderful model of the entire solar system. The Sun, Mercury, Venus, then Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, all the planets and everything moving in sync like a perfect model. When he called his class, all his students, and he showed them the model, 
the students were aghast the spin was right the moons were right everything was so perfectly placed the students asked the teacher isaac newton sir you know it's wonderful who made it and newton said nobody he said no 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 come on we can't believe that nobody could have made it who made it newton said seriously nobody he said no 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 sir you know who made this model is so perfect well synced newton said if you are not ready to believe that nobody made this why do you so easily believe that nobody made the real thing <laughs> do you understand why do we so easily think that it just became accidental if a model you are not ready to believe that nobody made it the balance that has been created in the cosmos is so fine so well tuned that keeps us all in perfect composure and harmony so right from the cosmic balance come down to the ecological balance that gives life you all know more than me ecologically you know we are not just organisms animals insects that live and breathe the same air we share the same temperatures a little tide here a little heat wave there and you get an el nino which destroys coastline somewhere else you cut the trees in amazon then you disturb the monsoon cycle everybody is finding that out but i'll give you one classic example in china you know when they were into the farms it's a farm predominant country agriculture so all the women who went out to work in the farms they were so scared of spiders every time when there was harvesting time there would be huge spiders in millions in china so the chinese government decided to get rid of the spiders so the women can work at peace and they can produce more work okay they are work oriented country so they got rid of all the spiders you know what happened that year there was no harvest because there were little insects that came up from nowhere they ate the harvest and the women had nothing to pick so you know what they had to do they had to prepare spider farms to grow spiders and put them back into the farm so the harvest would come <laughs> every little creature has its role to play for life so in your organization every smallest employee has something to play in sbi <laughs> nobody is too small and nobody is too big we need to know that nobody is too small nobody is too big we need to work together and find that balance how do we relate with everybody that we have so one cosmic balance to ecological balance then come to physiological balance you know you exist i exist those who have diabetes they know a little bit of sugar imbalance you go into hypo or hyper both are dangerous hypo people begin to take their clothes off they don't know what's happening it's known as metal jam your brain stops more sugar a little less sugar so fine balance one more shocking statement i want to give you know how much iodine we all know that in vitamins and everything as you become older you know that this vitamin b in b1 b12 na bodo bo lambu lambu tantra cha you become more knowledgeable <laughs> as you go grow older right so how much iodine a human body needs throughout its life is less than a teaspoon it is less than a teaspoon okay that's the entire life that you need the doses that you need every day is in nanograms or micrograms okay but you know the power that iodine has while you are in the womb okay if this nanogram of iodine is less you become a remedial your brain cells don't grow and if that nanogram of iodine is more you become a genius where you just listen to nobody where <laughs> <You know? laughs> if you are remedial you understand nobody and if you become a genius you listen to nobody both have their advantages and disadvantages okay but i'm saying that that nanogram of iodine in your prenatal stage decides on who you become what a balance at that stage that way you can see the entire human body has this amazing balance so if balance is necessary in the cosmos if it's necessary in ecology if it's necessary in 
your physiology. At the same time, it is necessary in your emotional world. What I want to emphasize, which is very important as we go along, that you take balance. If you have balance in your body, you are healthy. If you have a balanced face, you know, it's not important the color of your skin or the color of your eye. You may have blue eyes, but if they're squint, <laughs> it doesn't have, have, you have. You might have a fair skin, but your nose is out of place. You don't have a beautiful face. So the beauty of a face is not to have, if I give you the best eyes, the best nose, the best ears, the best lips, the best hair, the best forehead, and the best skin, you will still have an ugly face. I'm just trying to say, it is balance that gives you beauty. It is not the best of the things. Balance. So, balance in the body gives you health. Balance in the face gives you beauty. Balance in a building gives it strength. Okay? Then balance in a statement, when you release a statement, if you say it's a balanced statement, it gives it weight. Whenever, as officers, you speak, you should speak balanced. Your subordinates demand that the, uh, that the boss is balanced. Okay? The boss doesn't demand that you are balanced. They want to overwork you. <laughs> so it's, it's there. It's, it's like the total chain. So balance in your statements or words will give it weight. Balance in a team gives it success. And balance in your life. When you begin to juggle between your home and your family and your friends and your children and your aspirations and your inspirations, it gives you joy and happiness. So if you understand that when you strike this balance, only that balance, you don't have to have great wealth. You don't have to have great success or great education. You have to have everything in the right combination in balance. When you have that in balance, you will find a different way. Even at SBI will become a holiday. We are always searching to take a break. You know, but holidays, holidays, we say we go into a holiday to come into mood. But your mood decides the joy you get into your holiday. If you change the mood where you are, when Edison, he was asked that, you know, for 24 hours he would work, 7 days a week, 12 months a year, and his wife got tired, he said, look, Edison, you know, why don't we have a break and take a holiday? He said, what's a holiday? He was a scientist, he was working, he has invented more than 1,000 inventions. And um, his wife said, look, you know, think of a place where you are happy and you feel comfortable, you are unwinding and you become creative. He said, I have that place. So they packed a picnic bag, put in sandwiches. First time Edison was going for a holiday with his wife, he took his wife and took her to his laboratory. This is the place. I am happy. I unwind. I am happy. I work. So work is not a burden. Change your mood and you will change the environment. Don't change your environment to change your mood. Go home and think about it. I think I'm becoming too heavy on you, but still, <laughs> go home, go home. <laughs> you know. But I'm just trying to tell you that there is a way of finding and revisiting this balance which can give you joy that we are looking for. So I'm stressing now. All the forms of macro balance that I have just described are nothing compared to the micro balance you have to do in your mind and into the world within. The world of emotions, the world of relations, and the world of moods. Sometimes they are unpredictable. Sometimes they are uncontrollable. But you must understand that the stability and the balance of your mind is more important than anything in the world. This is what Lord Krishna tells Arjun. Arjun is about to fight a war and he loses balance. He tells Krishna, the Siddhanti Mama Gatrani Mukham Chapari Shushyati Roma Harshascha Jayate Brahmati Vachame Mana My hands are trembling, my mouth is dry, my mind is spinning, I can't fight. I have an armor, I have a bow, I have an arrow, I have everything. I have an army, but I can't fight. Krishna doesn't do what a modern physiotherapist would do. Just, you know, okay, your hands are trembling, I'll massage them. Your mouth is dry, here, take glucose. <laughs> your mind is spinning, mind is spinning, her, lie down for five minutes and come back and let's go, go. No, 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 no. Krishna says, 
क्लेब्यम मासम गम पार्थ नई त्वैत उपपद्यते शुद्र हृदय दौर्बल्यम त्यक्त तिष्ट परंत गेट रिड ऑफ दैट कावर्डाइज इन योर माइंड एंड योर हार्ट गेट अप यू हैव अ ड्यूटी एंड अ रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी राइज एंड अकम्प्लिश इट so rather than changing the macro climate the weather around you change the weather within you the secret of finding and striking that balance is changing the weather within you that's what the gita says and once we find that we find out that that's more important than all your degrees and successful put yourself into this situation this is imaginary and i hope this is not true and i never pray for this but i'm sharing this incident suppose you suffer from a heart attack hope you don't okay and you suffer from a heart attack and they ask you where do you want to go and you will say that take me to the best doctor in the world everybody would want because we can't afford it and they are not available we go to the next best okay so if you say take me to the best doctor of the world and we wheel you in i'm also there helping you i wheel you in and the only way we to find out that he is the best or not for a bypass surgery is we know that he has performed bypass surgery of all the presidents and prime ministers of the world good so the first room has all the photographs of him with all the presidents and prime minister credible the second is lined with all the certificates and degrees that he has attained no doubts third room is filled with all the opinions of the people who have been operated and they are so happy with him that you know you have no scope to deny or doubt credibility of success credibility of photographs credibility of opinions and certificates this is the world we live in right so you say yeah quickly wheel me in get my bypass done before you are taken into the surgery suppose the nurses come out and the nurses say suppose the nurses come out and the nurses tell you you are there on the bed and they say I'm sorry Mr patient uh just yesterday the doctor's only son you know has died and he has lost the stability of his mind would you go in <laughs> what about the degrees what about the photographs what about the certificates what about the opinions of the world all your certificates education opinions credibility matter nothing compared to the stability of your mind the stability of your mind is the supreme most important thing that's what krishna has said that's what lord swaminarayan has said bhagwan swaminarayan has insisted that control your mind control your emotions and nobody in this world will be able to disturb you even if you are late if you have control over your mind it won't hurt you majority of us are so sick and tired of the traffic that the moment we sit into the car we start swearing <laughs> can you do anything about it you can just add to it we always say gatli badi gaadi ho pan tamari you are honking and you keep swearing the bow gaadi ho theke ba wah bhai you <laughs> you are driving a car we tend to isolate ourselves from the situation and we start complaining about the situation but no 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 think different the moment what bhagwan swami nan has said that a person who sees the world around him sees beautiful things ugly things sees successful and failure but fails to see within him is the greatest of all fools first start seeing yourself and then go around and take you know measurements and reference points from things around you but the problem that we live you know we just talked about somebody going crazy he's meaningless but we live in a supremely sensitive society super sensitive that we become crazy almost 20 times in a day then we retain balance you know many of us now we found it's like a fashion to become crazy lose your head and then search for it then put it back on unless somebody gives it back to you pan we do have that problem we live in a supremely sensitive society now think about this the higher you are the more vulnerable you are the guy who sweeps the streets koi chinta na thi the guy you know who washes the laundry koi chinta na thi the milkman or the guy who serves you tea or the pun in sbi he is perhaps more balanced 
<laughs> then the officers who sit in the AC room. Aju etla mate kauchu. Why? You know, we live in this world of remote controls. When you are sitting in front of your television, you know, with the remote, you feel you have power. IX channel, BG channel, 3G, Chothi, I don't know, Ketli channels, or Ketli, I don't know, because we don't, don't watch TV. But we know with the remote, you keep going on and on and on. So you are at power. Okay, for a second, you know, you see a movie or maybe sports or a drama or something natural or some scenery. We continue to do it, okay? And we feel powerful. But you know what? When you are driving a car and if people behind you keep honking and you become angry, you have already handed your remote control to him. <laughs> Some guys, the more he honks, the greater the anger. So his volume badal toh And you see, he has power over you. The moment you get angry on people around you, you are dishing out remote controls. And you come down and your chauffeur has forgotten the way and he drives you mad, you have given the second remote control to him. <laughs> The bigger people are controlled more by their chauffeur and the laundry man than the people they control. Tomorrow mood bagadi jai. Taratal, because you keep on handing out remote controls to other people. When you come to the lift and the lift man is not ready, you have handed one more remote control to him. You know, he decides how whether you sink or lift. You know, he can change your moods. Mood swings jet hain. Okay. People, you go into a party all well dressed and somebody says, I'm tai barabar na thile. You've already given your remote control to him. <laughs> you know, it's such a funny world we live in. We are so egoistic and we are so conscious about ourselves. Even when we are going to a movie, now put your hand on your heart. Even when you are going into a movie, tran kallak andharama beswanash, to you get dressed up. But we are so egoistic that when we are watching a movie and uh, we think everybody is watching us, nobody cares about you. And still we spend one hour in front of the mirror dressing up. Still so egoistic. Wherever we go, we go around dishing out our remote controls. Though at the end of the day, there are 50 people controlling your moods. I am saying... Learn to control your own moods. Don't give away remote control. Keep your remote in your own hands. The way to keep balance in everything that you do and experience is to keep your remote. Keep your remote with yourself. Don't allow anybody, don't allow anybody to take charge of your emotions. When you take control of yourself, you become a very different person. Remember, you'll probably tell me, Pramukh Swami very often says, to really find out how strong you are, just think how many times in a day you are disturbed. The more, the weak. Samjiga? To really measure your strength, just think how many times in a day you are disturbed. This is what Pramukh Swami says. Even the huge events cannot disturb you. Even the small things cannot disturb you. You are worried. You take action. There is a way, the secrets I want to just reveal you, which we have experienced, but there is a way of finding a balance even in turmoil. You will tell me, Swami, that okay, we'll find a way, we'll be able to be non-disturbed, we'll be very comfortable. But if I am balanced, you know, then I don't need to be worried about the world. No, 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 no. Even if you are balanced and the world around you is not balanced, you'll still have problems. You don't drink and drive. But what if the other guy does? Our society mati kem tamare daru dur karvanu che peke hu to nahi pito par same no pe to chadi bese. Majority of the problems are not our problems. As you go along you will find out I'm coming down majority of our problems are not our problems. Why? That suppose you you are fine you are comfortable but if somebody else does something wrong you go home and suddenly you find out, you know, your son has just broken the window of the next door neighbor. You don't create a problem and you go down, the problem is there waiting for you. So, even if you are balanced, if the things around you are not balanced, you will be disturbed again and again. And I gave you, this world is such a miserable world, then it does not even spare God. 
There is an ancient story that Pramukh Swami often gives about Shiva and Parvati. Okay, once Shiva and Parvati they were walking with Potio in a Potiyane in Jatada, and when they were traveling, both of them were very tired. So both of them, you know, were thought, okay, okay, we'll take turns. So Shiva asked Parvati, ladies before gents, that I'm best on who Potio in Chalo. While they were going from the first village, the villagers got together. Okay, le, kya to pati vata wife at nathi. Pati na chala vechan pote besi gay. And suddenly the Par- Parvati said, you know, no, 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 this is not right. Tame pati dev, you get onto the potio, I will walk. The next villagers, the villagers got together and said, Kele, ek dam am rushta prus patha jeva se, ane chadi gya, ane patni na chala vesh. So both of them decided, ke 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 ave ek kaam kari, aapne dev besiya. When both of them sat on it, the third villager, the villagers said, Kele, aap be jana patha thai ne, ek bichara paada upar be chadi gya. This is too much. So both of them got down and they were just walking the portio empty. And the fourth village said they are foolish. They have a vehicle and they are not using it. <laughs> this is the world. Every which way you lose. Every which way you lose. Even if you do good, you are not good enough. If you do bad, nobody is worse than you. <laughs> Even if you don't do anything, you are lazy. If you do too much, you are showing off. Karuanusu. So even if you are balanced, the world, God bless the world, the world won't allow you to be balanced. When we are living in this world, things will go around and things will happen which you won't be able to control and it will be a challenge. So we need to find a way. Simple things happen. One of our devotees, he was just outside the temple. He came out from the rickshaw and he was giving the money to the rickshaw driver and some other car banged into the rickshaw, the rickshaw fell on him and he died. He was not involved in the accident. It was a mistake of another car. The rickshaw was okay, the rickshaw driver was safe, there was no bump, it was a very simple nudge. There was nothing that he did. See, the world around you may disturb. I know another devotee, he's from London, and I'm telling you two examples that he was on Mumbai airport. While he was in the airport, somebody came along and said, if you are going down to London, please take some mail. He was a nice fellow. He took some mail and just give it there. Somebody will pick it up and he has a small packet, very small thin packet. Just take it. When you are on the airport, you are about to check in. If somebody gives you something about six, seven years ago, you normally pick it up. So he took it. He said, somebody will come to your temple and pick it up. When he landed at the London airport, when the police checked, there was drugs in that packet. It took six years for this boy fighting with the police to prove his innocence just because a stranger gave him a packet. He was balanced. But an incident or event occurs which you don't have any control, you have nothing to do, can throw you off balance. So we need to find a way on how we negotiate through these things. So the first thing you remember is to learn to respect. There are five things I want to share tonight and then conclude. The first thing that you must remember is to learn to respect. Respect all the people who come into your life. All the people. Whether it's the bus driver or chauffeur or laundry man, any man, whether it's a friend or an enemy, even enemies deserve respect. Even if he's an enemy, I'm not saying do what he says, but respect every person who enters your life. He can help you make it better. Okay? When you respect a person or an event, any event, koi pan event hai, respect, then you want to understand it. So respect means understand that event or that person. Your problems will lessen straight away. Majority of our problems or disturbance occur because we don't respect and we don't understand. Once in a train, all the passengers were reading newspapers and comfortable quiet. One man, he gets up with two children, two boys. And the boys are very rowdy, mischievous, you know. They are shouting, getting up, getting onto dad's shoulder and they are taking the newspaper from somebody. You know. Damal, damal. The entire compartment, you know, reached its limit. They are about to tell that guy and tell the children off. Then suddenly the man turned to the people and he said, I am so sorry. 
just one hour ago their mother has died of cancer and i just don't know what to tell them the entire compartment became sympathetic they took the children into the labs they gave them sweets they comforted them and everything became good if you respect and understand a situation your conflict will disappear instantly haqeeqat ma you go home and you want hot food and you suddenly you start shouting every day garam khawa mart nahi naam chen tem chen you start shouting you never asked your wife whether she's had a back problem something's happened something's wrong whether she was busy respect and understand once you do that you will solve majority of your questions when you respect and understand pramukh swami maharaj you know wherever swami ji moves i'm talking about older times 10 15 years ago ki baat hai he was in he had gone into a village and all the village a small village is a dusty small 2000 people village but the villagers had gathered and they were about to do a small procession to the dusty lanes the dhurdya rasta hoy na pramukh swami has visited more than 15000 villages by foot half a million homes he has visited home by home that's why people love him it's not because he hardly gives speeches but it's connection with the people so all the people had gathered but swami had a fever 103 so all the sadhus who had gone in earlier arrangements they were arguing with the people saying let's cancel the procession pramukh swami has a fever you know it was all afternoon and the procession was at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon he said please cancel it and they were complaining and arguing with the people at that time pramukh swami arrived and this argument was going on please cancel it please cancel it swami just came and took that sadhu's hand and put it on the head of the organizer you know small devotee simple man and swami said ke anu jo mastak ketlu garam che char kallak thi loka tap ma ubha che apne 15 minute ma kai vandho nahi aave when you respect and understand you change the world scenario so even when somebody comes you must respect and understand even your subordinate even the boss you must understand why he is saying this you know why your subordinate is say when you do that you will totally be free of all the things so sometimes we don't respect and understand and things become haywire once in amdabad temple i guess i was just going to go to the aarti and one of our devotees his name is mani bhai chawala he was a very old devotee now he has passed away just one year back he was there and he was just wearing his champals after the aarti i said mani bhai me ko kya updya is after 7:38 in the evening mane ke jange chadwa means to a battle i said okay i'm going to ghare jau chu uh into in what i'm commas i'm telling you i'm going to ghare jau chu me ko kem what's wrong मैं कहूँ घरे जाऊँ चले जंगे चढ़वा यू गोइंग इन टू बैटल ये कि हाँ मैं कहूँ सूत यू प्रश्न है व्हाट्स द प्रॉब्लम ये कि जो हम घरे जाइस इतने हूँ सवार ना आठ वाकियों ने निकले हुए एंड आई हैव गोन फ्रॉम प्लेस टू प्लेस शॉप टू शॉप इनटू द बाजार आई हैव वर्क्ड होल डे एंड आई वांट � આખો દિવસ હું ઘરમાં છું મારે બારે જવું છે આઈ વોન્ટ ટુ ગો બેક હોમ બીકોઝ આઈ વર્ક હોલ ડે એન્ડ શી હેઝ રિમેન ઇન હોમ હોલ ડે સો શી વોન્ટ ટુ ગો આઉટ એટલે કે યુદ્ધ થશે અમારું મેં કહ્યું એમ કે રોજ થાય છે પછી મેં કહ્યું હવે એ કે મારા દીકરાને કહીશ કે તું લઈ જા એટલે એ હોશિયાર છે એ કે છે પેટ્રોલ નથી he also knows in anticipation you know this is almost like kashmir talks <laughs> stale mate we know what the questions will be we know what the answers will be <laughs> and we still negotiate and we still have conferences barabar na that's the different world okay and aa baju he knows what the problems are what his son would say the wife would say okay bhai ardho kallak chalse badu tharse pachi okay it will go on for half an hour simmering and then it will all calm down and cool down i said you know mani bhai ek kaam karo na su મેં કહ્યું તમે ઘરે જાઓ ને પછી તમે કોને સામેથી કહો કે ચાલો બારે એ કે ના 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 લઈ જશે મને મેં કહ્યું ઇફ આઈ સે તો હી શીલ ટેક મી સો આઈ સેડ યુ ગો હોમ એન્ડ યુ ટેલ યોર વાઈફ કે લેટ્સ ગો આઉટ સામેથી વન્સ નેક્સ્ટ ડે હી કેમ બેક ઇન ધ મોર્નિંગ રિયલી હેપી એન્ડ સ્માઈલિંગ આઈ સે વોટ હેપન 
એસે કે હું ઘરે ગયો અને મેં કીધું કે ચાલો બાર એ કે આજે નહીં ધીસ આઈ થિંક યુ નો મોર અબાઉટ ઇટ દેન આઈ ડુ ઓકે બટ હું એમ કહું છું બી જેન્યુઇન so if you respect and understand the other person or the people around you you will ease tens tension you will create balance second thing sometimes even if you respect and understand certain problems won't go away amuk problems will go away but certain problems won't go away keva suddenly you get an illness like cancer or tb or suddenly in an accident you break your hand even if you respect and understand it doesn't go away there are problems which are there which are not in your control and they also disturb us barabar ne so problems which you can't control and you have not created and you can't ease accept them the big problem that we have we do not accept the things we can't change change the things you can and accept the things you can't you'll get back into balance you'll restore balance if you look at it this way easy way sir if you're in an accident and you keep mumbling and that is accident and this is what has happened this is what happens you are making yourself more miserable more miserable more miserable accept it and find a way whether it's rest whether it's medication whether it's operation whatever find a way by accepting a situation it's like the weather oscar wilde says that everybody on this earth curses the weather but nobody can do a damn thing about it <laughs> majority of our time goes in cursing the weather bo varsha cha ja am cha them can you do anything about it keep quiet take an umbrella and go out there is a way na people ask me ke swami how should we live in this recession i said how do you live in a storm you can't stop it okay then find a way close your window move get into safety find a you have to adjust your lifestyle to the reception pachi pradesh ni yatra o band karo holiday for one band karo extra budget cut karo find a way find a way and you'll get away only when you accept the situation sometimes we cannot bear the promotion of a friend le pila ne promotion made tame bolvanu band kar do that's very mean thai che the moment your friend strikes good success and he strikes gold you know when we are in a party and everything lagna ma to lagan to bijana thai che we all want everybody should look at us are bijana lagan che it's his day support the system but straight away we are in a, such a competitive world so even a promotion of a friend can disturb you jean louis jomer he was a french defense secretary but instead of him his friend was promoted he felt so hurt betrayed by his country he felt hurt nobody betrayed him he started passing off secret information to kgb russia i'm talking about years decades back he started passing on secret information because he felt betrayed by his country then after 10 years they promoted him as the supreme in charge of defense what happened what happened because he could not tolerate the promotion of his friend he betrayed his country when it was his turn he was found out as a mole and jailed kem so things which you can't control be happy about them and accept them and you will rise beyond you know i just wanted to explain to you that one of our temples with pramukh swami has built the temple in london nisdan temple which is featured in the guinness book of world records which is considered as the taj of nisdan which which i want to just tell you today that when president clinton came down to meet pramukh swami he told pramukh swami we didn't know he said swami ji i have seen your work much before i am meeting you we were all surprised i said how can that be he said when i was in a meeting in the british parliament we had half an hour tony blair told me that sit into my helicopter i'll show you some interesting new additions to london and the first place that the helicopter went was over your beautiful temple in nisdan <laughs> presidents and prime ministers are sharing that success okay so it is considered as one of the most successful hindu temple in the whole of the western hemisphere the london temple which was made by volunteers stone was taken from bulgaria shipped to kanla 
listed carved ship back to london think of the logistics pella pillars avi jan pachi dome ja you can't do it everything has to go piece by piece like a giant jigsaw it was arranged in two and a half years it was beautiful and successful what the world sees as success i term as a failure you know why if you look at it the way we searched we were in nisdan anyway we had a small temple everybody was tired of the nisdan area so we searched almost to 11 locations and art jagya jameen lay lewa aate permissions mate we miserably failed at all eight locations pramukh swami accepted that situation and swami said ke bhagwan ni ichha che ahiya j mandir karo a place where we didn't want to build the temple pramukh swami said accept the situation it's god's wish build the temple and it has turned out to be the greatest success of hinduism accept the situation okay and then you can turn it into a positive thing so the first is respect second is accept and the third is act you know you can accept a situation then do nothing no 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 you will not restore balance until you act positively if it's a situation that you are you know ill you are in a traffic jam you have to act positively if you act positively you will find a way gandhi when he was chucked out of the train and insulted he accepted that insult but he acted and he acted positively created a whole movement and inspiration that freed our nation many times we are done but we never act positively if somebody insults you kem modo aayo you figure you will insult him back that's how we see you know bank ma jam credit and debit <laughs> everything is balanced kai udhar rakho nahi okay kai udhar na rakhe tarat aj pelo ke enthi double aapi de interest compound interest sahit okay i am saying why don't you take that insult insult and think positively and say if you are late i'll turn come back in time act positive so first respect second accept then third act positively in london pramukh swami accepted that this is the place we will do but he acted positively he said okay forget it this is a rubbish area let's not make anything here let's not even make a small temple make a small hall no 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 he acted positively and created one of the dreams of the world so act positively ag wells you've heard who has written 84 books one of the finest thinkers you know something he was poverty stricken his father was a gardener mother was a maid they lived on poverty line when he broke his leg at the age of 8 he writes that it was the finest thing that ever happened to me because when i broke my leg that is the first time i started reading books at the age of 17 he was thrown out of a job sacked otherwise he said i would have been a tailor all my life he was a poor tailor they chucked him out at the age of 21 he lost his kidney playing football so that's when he decided that i can't do anything physical all i can do is write and that's what made him into a writer all the problems he accepted and acted positively he turned into a writer apre to sidhu abghat ch oh atlo bodu bhagwan mara upar apits all your problems will teach you something if you act positively so act positively anywhere when orobindo was thrown into a jail he got hold of gita he acted positively he did not just become a social leader he became the leader of humanity a spiritual leader across time shri arvind so act positive anything that is thrown at you even the worst conditions go beyond them by acting positive but i'm telling you maybe all of us will not become hg wells pag todin pachi book vanchwa beso to nahi thai jani jon jail ma jen gita rakso you won't become a spiritual leader copycats go nowhere but i'm telling you the difficulties you face turn them into positive that is the balance i'm looking for don't just expect that nothing wrong should happen to you turn the wrongs into correct scenarios so first again i'm repeating because it's important respect situations accept the situations you can't change and the third is act positively 
But suppose even if you act positively, it still doesn't go away. Okay? You have a problem and you are on the verge of divorce. You do all and still it doesn't go away. Still it doesn't go away. Then the fourth is reflect upon God. Bhagavan karta hartasha. Just two days ago, one boy came to me, a little, uh, and just a newborn baby had been born, and the doctors had said she, the baby cannot survive. Both dukhiyata, both dukhiyata. Even if the baby survives, it will be brain damaged 90%. Both motu complication atu. They were suffering, difficult. I also prayed that the baby should survive. But then Pramukh Swami had said, what is in the benefit of the baby and the parents would happen? If the baby had survived, and if lived brain damaged all her, her life, so it would be such a miserable life for the baby. I'm not talking about ethonesia, I'm not talking about anything, I'm just saying the will of God is more important than your and my will. So at the end of everything, even if that problem doesn't go away, disease you have, it doesn't go away, then accept it as the will of God. You try your best in making it positive, still it doesn't go away. Accept it as the will of God. That is the greatest cushion you can sleep on. Bhagavan Nietzsche. And it's not just you and me. Just about a few months back, you know, one of one great uh, actor, Amitabh Bachchan, he had come for Pramukh Swami's darshan. Whenever Swami is nearby, he would come down privately. And he came for Swamiji's darshan because he had undergone some huge problems before and he had sought blessings and he has great love for Swami. He's a very nice man, very good individual. You know, you cannot just say actors are like this. No, no, no. Very nice, very thorough, very intelligent, very sober person. So he came down, he took blessings of Swami. He has also written in his blog about Bapa. Then when he was coming out, while I was taking him out, we were on the way down to his car, he said one very interesting thing, which I believe that all of us should share. He said, why do I come to Pramukh Swami so often? Because one thing I have learned from him, which is very close to my heart. I said, what? He said, everybody wishes that things should happen according to you, me, all of us. But then antar my ichcha, ke mari ichcha pramane thai. Okay? He said, everybody wishes that things should happen according to their wish. Okay? What I have learned from Pramukh Swami, that if things happen according to my wish, I am happy. Because they have happened according to my wish. But if things do not happen according to my wish, then they have happened according to the wish of God. So I am happier. Go home and think about this. If things happen according to your wish, be happy. And if things do not happen according to your wish, they have happened according to the wish of God, be happier. Great people have made a way to find a way that when you can live and find out that you can take an advantage of whatever disability that you have. And when you reflect upon God, this energy really serves to make you stronger from inside. Many people have learnt you must have heard of Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb. Think of the world, Second World War scenario. You have Roosevelt, you have Stalin, you have Hitler. Everybody, you have Japan on one end. Everybody is fighting that war. The war is not ending. Roosevelt is the president of America. Secretly, they have asked Robert Oppenheimer. He's a German who has gone to America. He is making a bomb. Now, they had arranged a meeting on 13th July 1945, Stalin and Roosevelt were meeting. Roosevelt sent a message to Robert Oppenheimer, the when are you testing the bomb? We must have the knowledge that whether we have the bomb or not. And Oppenheimer said 16th July. Roosevelt, he's the president, politically motivated, he said no, test it on 12th. Four days ago, because if he has the test under his belt, the negotiation power with Stalin becomes multifold more. Okay, you understand, I'm talking about the world scenario. So Roosevelt personally writes to Oppenheimer, said, test it on 12th. Oppenheimer is a scientist, he said, only 16th July. He writes back. Roosevelt forces again. Oppenheimer cuts the line. Says, no, you may be the president of America, scientist works in a scientific way. We are not ready. Do you know what happens? They think, the American government thinks that he has lost his balance. 
Oppenheimer. So they bring in FBI to monitor him. They bring friends from Germany who are his friends to cajole and you know talk to him. They bring his wife and his other friends and relatives to be with Oppenheimer to make sure that the tension was immense. North Alamos, Barabar, New Mexico. That's where the bomb was going to be detonated on 16 July 1945. And they feel that there is so much pressure, first atomic bomb. So they are constantly monitoring the stability of Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer still writes back 16th July 1945. Whether you meet Stalin or not, it's not my concern. My concern is to my project. Okay? And when that bomb is detonated, the first mushroom cloud, the reporters describe, I'm quoting the words, that Oppenheimer grew tense. He scarcely breathed. He hold, held on to a post to steady himself because 10 miles away the explosion occurred and there was a huge vibration, so he held on to the post. And straight after the atomic bomb detonation, the reporters asked Oppenheimer that physically you took the support Okay, of a pole to keep balance. What gave you balance in your mind? What flashed into your mind? Oppenheimer said, without waiting a second, he said, the Bhagavad Gita. He said, the Bhagavad Gita. I remember the words of Krishna that time I am the shatterer of the world. The without the energy of God, nothing can restore the balance on this earth. Now my question to you is that a German scientist in America during the Second World War, which we were not involved in, even to seek balance, he reaches out to the Bhagavad Gita. Why can't you and me? You know, totally he's, he's not, but he reaches out to the Bhagavad Gita. When Schopenhauer, he is a German and he says that the Upanishads are the finest scriptures and one day they will become the faith of the entire world. And he says that they have been the solace of my life, they will be the solace of my death. When they seek spiritual inspiration, belief in God to bring stability. When Gandhi, when Gandhi said that I would have been a lunatic long time ago without prayer. When Lincoln was asked and he said, when every friend on this earth has deserted me, I look deep down into my heart and I still find there is one friend who accepts me, that is God and he gives me inspiration. So to keep balance, first respect, then second, accept, the third, act positively, fourth, reflect upon God. When you do that, nothing can change the course of your history. Because we tend to sometimes think that everything will happen according to the way we want. You know, I was in Amdabad temple, some children came and I said, how did your exams go? Pariksha ke vi gai? Eke Swami, naat jain barabar. I said, wait a minute. I was a new, new breed of kids, you know. Eke naat jain barabar. I said, kem? Eke badu syllabus ni baar no puchyu. See, they have a clear understanding ke syllabus ni baar no hoi na, toh I have a right to fail. <laughs> this is the, because we have been trained ke sahib ki du na toh ele me khotu kariu par em na chale. There is a moral compass in our minds that we have to be true to. So I told them, I said, I don't have to ask the syllabus, but I don't have to ask the question. He said, no, no. Wait a minute. I want to tell you, only your school exams are within your syllabus. Once you stop studying, the entire life is out of syllabus. When you get married, your husband is in the syllabus. 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 No, no, no. This is the discover. Do you understand? When you get a child who does not study a syllabus, your husband is in the syllabus. You ask yourself, what is your life? It's you. Your husband is in the syllabus. Your husband is in the syllabus. When you get married, your husband and your relatives are in the syllabus by default. You have not selected them. Who am I going to? Ketli badi vastu we have accepted which is out of our syllabus. You have no control. And because you accept as God's will, Bhagawan na sukhe karin, that's why you are happy. I want to just ask you simple logical questions. Be honest with me. We tend to say we control. We tend to say we choose. We tend to say we have the freedom. 
But do we really have the choice and freedom of some of the most important things in life? Did you choose to be a man or a woman? Bola. It designs and decides and directs your worldview. You never chose to be a man or a woman. But you accept. Accept and move ahead. No, no, no. The simplest thing. Did you choose your name? And you are happy about it. Okay. Okay. But still, I'm just trying to say, you never chose your name. But you are happy and proud. Did you choose your birth date? Why do you celebrate it? You didn't choose it. So celebrate the events that you don't even choose. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Will you choose your death date? Did you choose your height? Many people are not happy with their height. Did you choose the color of your skin? It's all humbug. All these fairness screams are all, you know, techniques. Sakyat nati is genetic. Okay? Did it do, do even doctors choose their disease? Can you choose your diseases? Doctor Hoy, I've seen so many gastroenterologists who are taking antacid pills. Tamaru matare. Majority of eye specialists, you know, wear glasses. They're always telling you, tamaru. <laughs> now I'm telling you the truth. We can't choose our name, we can't choose our neighbors. Okay, did you choose your parents? Did the parents choose you? They made you, but they didn't choose you. So I'm telling you, the people who are responsible for your happiness, your parents, your sisters, your brothers, your relatives, your name, your everything around you which is responsible for your joy and your misery, you didn't choose. So don't always think that I should have this and that. Try your best, whatever you get. You see, life is a game of cards. You cannot choose the cards you get. You can only choose the way you play. You can only choose. Ema tamay radwa jaso on bachi badda sodi sodi in cards jaso toy harso. Whatever you get, the face you've got, the height you've got, the education you've got, the house, the wife, the children, be happy. If you're happy with your children and your wife, then you will not be disturbed. So, see, whatever comes your way, rise beyond it. Many things in the life that you are going to face are out of syllabus. You have to rise to the occasion. When Akshardham was attacked, we were there whole night. It was not in our syllabus. Pramukh Swami and we have not done anything to aggravate anybody. Such a pious sadhu. Such a great organization. We serve. Even I was wondering, you know, why such a thing would happen. Nobody really knows. They just want popularity they've done. But it was so much gunfire, so many grenades. Akshadam, where there's not a single drop of pan, and there was so much blood. We were there. And it was shocking. And when I was there, and I was doing Mara, Pramukh Swami came. He first met all the victims, the people, comforted them, we prayed and everything. And then I said, Swami said, Mara Karwani. But I said, Miku, why did this happen? Then Swami told me a very interesting thing which you should remember. Swami said, And we accepted the celebration. We should also accept the pain with open arms and rise beyond it. Go ahead and think of opening the Akshardham as fast as possible. And after that event, we were still able to build another Akshardham in New Delhi. But after the WTC, when people could not forget the attack, still America is to build something there. The strength lies in within you, it's not the strength outside you. If you take it, whatever has happened, go beyond it. Then no difficulty with the help of God is too less. And if you have God with you, then you'll always rise beyond that thing. So it's very important that anything that comes your way, you will be able to rise beyond it if you are calm and quiet. So the last thing I want to say is after respect, accept, act, reflect on God, and by doing all this, you must introspect and interact. Because by doing all this, and if you cannot deliver what you think of, 
then you will never have that joy. You know, me telling you that one event like meeting Rindani Sahib 22 years ago still has an impact in my life, then we must be true to it. So don't ignore the small things. It is not just important once you are balanced, when you interact and introspect, you will be able to restore balance around you. Don't just be selfish and think about attaining balance at your own level. Be the instrument of restoring balance around you. So, adjust your environment. The guy who walks the top rope, like I said, the tight rope, he is not forcing the rope to adjust to him. He is adjusting his every footstep to the rope. The more the successful, the more adjustments you have to make every day, every second. You have to make it. And if you can do that, you will be able to restore balance in the people around you, things around you. I'll give you an example. They may be simple things. When once President Kalam had come to meet Pramukh Swami as the president, he came to the Ahmedabad temple. Chief Minister Narendra Modi was also with him. So we have a small lift. So first the president went into that lift. Then the chief minister went in. I was the third person because I was accompanying them. Pramukh Swami was upstairs. They were waiting for them. Fourth, the black cat, the chief security officer of Narendra Bhai, he came in. Four of us were in the lift and the lift didn't work. Samjigya? Four under bed, how do you do it? You have to adjust. Don't wait for somebody else to do so. You have to start moving. At the charge, and we were inside the lift. The lift won't move. Or imagine the president and the chief minister. BAPS, which is you know prestigious for its sort of efficient system, the lift stopped working. All right. Uh, suddenly, there was a lot of grief on the face of the security officer. He was, you know, he's trying to do something. Kalam. The first thing he did, he's put his hand on the shoulder of the chief, the security officer. See the heart, Mukyo. We were all there. He said, have patience. Just listen. He said, have patience. We are going to meet a spiritual person. So God is teaching us to have patience. <laughs> then he made a statement that most, almost all of life's problems are solved by patience and not action. We are so eager to act. But sometimes even a small value like patience solves most of your problems. Nobody is a permanent enemy and nobody is a permanent friend. So I am just trying to tell you that little things like this. So for God's sake, to restore balance in you, control your mind and your soul and accept God's will as the ultimate will. To restore balance around you, be nice. By being nice, you never hurt a soul. You will always have people who are more comfortable and in balance and you will become balanced. You know, if you are nice, everything can go well. So ultimately, if you can be nice and be happy, even your smallest act can save the greatest individual. You don't have to be big. I'm leaving you with one incident which is very close to my heart. You might have heard of the name Oscar Wilde. A very good thinker, very big writer. His life as such was not that perfect. But as a writer and a thinker and author, he was very prestigious. In England, by the age, in, the, in his early 20s, he had become so famous that his plays like The Importance of Being Earnest, The Happy Prince, and so many had attained great fame. He had become a celebrity, Oscar Wilde. People would throng to see him, to hear him, to read him. Young guy. But he committed an offense, which was a moral offense. And he was being dragged to jail. Oscar Wilde writes in his own memoirs, he was being dragged and there was a huge crowd outside that jail. It was the most humiliating moment of his life. He was being pushed into the jail by officers. There was a huge crowd and majority of the crowd was booing. Shouting and booing, but the people are angry at him. He says, when I was being pushed into the jail, in that huge crowd, there was one old gentleman. He came out, he dropped his head and lifted his hat. Just one small gesture of lifting his hat quietened the crowd. 
એક માણસ આગળ આવીને એને ખાલી ટોપિયામાં ઉતારી એન્ડ આઈ વોઝ પુસ્ટ ઇન ટુ ધ જેલ યુ નો વોટ હી રાઇટ્સ નાવ લિસન ટુ વોટ હી રાઇટ્સ ઓસ્કર વાઇલ્ડ કે આઈ ડુ નોટ નો ટુ ધ પ્રેઝન્ટ મોમેન્ટ આઈ ડુ નોટ નો ટુ ધ પ્રેઝન્ટ મોમેન્ટ વેધર ધીસ ઓલ્ડ મેન ઇઝ અવેર દેટ આઈ વોઝ ઓલ્સો ઇવન કોન્શિયસ ઓફ હિઝ એક્શન એ માણસને મને ખબર જ નથી કે વેધર હી નોઝ દેટ આઈ સો હિમ ઓકે i store that moment in the treasure house of my heart i keep it there as a secret debt that i can never repay the old man okay when the wisdom when all my wisdom became profitless when my philosophy became barren nothing came to my rescue when the proverbs and phrases that i have written became dust in my mouth the simple memory of this lowly silent act of removing a hat has made my desert bloom a simple act of removing a hat of giving respect a nani vat che nani vat che but if you have the power to show respect you on the smallest guy you may be a non entity stranger but greatest of writers remember you for life for your simplest and smallest act and that's what the kathopanishads say they say etad alambanam shrestham etad alambanam praram etad alambanam gnatva brahma loke mahiyate no god to be your greatest pillar no god to be your greatest support no god and the smallest act that you do for god will become eternal and that is the reason in all difficulties even now pramukh swami who is 90 years old 90 he has had a heart attack he has had a quintuple bypass surgery five veins he is 90 a person who has traveled to more than 15000 villages and half a million homes written 6 lakh letters and replied to them he is continually doing that even now okay but nothing has been able to deter him because of his singular faith in god and people both singular faith ke u khabar people credit bps for building more than 100 educational institutes that's fine many hospitals many different 160 humanitarian activities whether it's you know water conservation ecological cleanliness but duj de addiction everything has been done but another thing that they also credit that pramukh swami has built 828 temples and centers of culture around the world 828 by a single person okay but now look at the statistics that doesn't mean god did not give him a heart attack that doesn't mean that he did not have to go to a bypass apan ke bhagwan ne mane heart attack abhi bhai thai go beyond it but from the 828 temples pramukh swami has created which has been featured in biggest books and greatest awards and recognition 727 have been built after his first heart attack and 528 have been built after his bypass apre to bypass ke ne but dadro na chade khatla mati utrai nikal upri jaso utro ej khatla ma chadi jaso che upar i'm just telling you pramukh swami singular faith and love for god and the people helps him and continues that he moves along in society because of this faith no problem is too big no situation is too much we can always find a way to balance ourselves let's pray today that of the 10 people in the alwars who were searching it was because of one person that the group was stable it is because of god that we are all stable cosmological balance ecological and physiological all balance even the emotional balance because of god one singular energy but you can take that inspiration of god and make sure that you should be that one individual that keeps state bank of india committed creative and full of integrity because banks are built on the trust they inspire so let us pray to god that we are ready to work as a team strike balance and inspire trust in everybody thank you very much